Hey, how's it going everybody? Uh, Will Curran here and I get a lot of questions about my setup and what does my studio look like? And so it's been in the studio for about nine months or so now in this setup. So I figured it was worth doing an updated tour, especially because I just updated the backdrop a little bit too. Um, so let's go through a little bit of a studio tour. We're in this raw, unedited, and all that fun stuff. So let's kick it off with my desk, which I get a ton of questions about. Um, so I have a standing desk, love sit stand desk. When I'm sitting, I'm usually sitting on a ball, still need to decide whether that's healthy or not. And then I have a standing mat right on over here. Um, this is the studio setup that I see. Um, I'm rocking an ultra wide monitor. This is the Odyssey G9 by Samsung. Highly recommend this monitor for two reasons, high refresh rate. So it looks really good, but also has a very tall um, resolution. So now in addition to being able to fit a lot of stuff wide, it also means that the windows aren't like smushed vertically. So when you're looking at an ultra wide monitor, Avoid the 1080p stuff. Look for anything 1440p to 1600 tall uh, as well. So you get that good pixel density, so it looks 4K. Um, I'm running everything off of a Mac Mini. This is the new M1 ones, or not new, but the M1 <laughs> Mac Mini. Uh, works absolutely fantastic. I highly recommend that computer. Um, beef it out. I put geek, uh, 10 gig internet, ethernet in it and everything like that. And uh, it runs this monitor and everything I need to do really, really smoothly. Um, a lot of people ask me about my camera setup, so why my video looks so good. They think it's a fake backdrop, actually. Um, so I'm actually running a DSLR mirrorless camera. In this case, it's total overkill. This is the Sony a7S III, and I have a, uh, a lens on here, which is a 16 or 24 millimeter 1.8 lens. Um, and I have that all running into a cam link capture card that takes the hdmi out of that camera and turns it into a webcam signal on the the computer um and then i have it all inside this teleprompter setup so i bought this glide gear uh teleprompter and along with this uh Man, what's the name of this brand? Lily Put, I think is the name of the brand. Monitor. And so what's great about this is that whenever I'm like, you know, working on something, I actually can come over here and bring it in front of the monitor. And what's great about this, I can put Zoom calls. I can put, you know, video on here. Um, you know, it's just giving you an idea of what this kind of looks like. I think it's going to trip out a bit, but like I can end up bringing up a video of myself on here, which lets me then be able to preview. And when I have guests and, you know, do video calls, I'm literally looking right at the lens of the camera. Um, so it looks absolutely fantastic. Um, so highly recommend if you're doing a lot of video content, do the teleprompter setup with a camera inside of it. Um, what's great about this Lily put monitor is I can actually flip it all uh, horizontally. So I actually can mirror it because it's definitely mirroring off a of glass back towards me. Um, so yeah, highly recommend that as well. Um, over here for audio wise, I'm running the Heil PR40. Uh, shout out to Brent Kruger for recommending this mic to me years ago. I think I've been running this mic now for six, seven years or so. Um, an absolutely fantastic microphone. And it runs via XLR right here down into this uh, audio interface called the Scarlett 2i2. This is a pretty good it's better than most but you know i want more <laughs> so i might eventually upgrade this in the next couple of years or so just to get a little bit better audio also another tip from brant kruger is i found this little rolls uh, mute mic switch that the mic plugs into so what's great about this is i can mute and unmute the mic silently right from underneath my desk so like literally i'll be like on a podcast and i can just mute and unmute myself very very quickly uh so shouts to that all running into the cloud lifter and all that fun stuff if you want to get nerdy um keyboard wise i'm rocking the mac keyboard with number pad i love number pad i like this a lot because it has touch id um it just makes logging in and out and paying for stuff and passwords a lot faster um i hate the keyboard overall though i miss my mechanical keyboards but touch id i can't go without for mice, I'm rocking the MX Master. I think this is the 2S. No, sorry, this is the 3. Um, now it's the 3S. I wish I had the 3S because it could be white and match this, but that's just me being nitpicky. Um, other things that are really cool about this setup, um, I have an Ember mug, so it keeps my tea really warm throughout the day. Um, I have this awesome Nomad charging plate. Um, if I had my phone, I'd show you, but I literally can put my phone, my AirPods, anything like that, multiple devices on this, and it'll all charge at once. Um, 
And then in terms of listening audio, um, mo- when I'm listening to you know, phone calls or anything like that, I'm usually rocking AirPods for this. But when I'm ever recording content, I have this set up right here. This is a shout to Andrew Latimer for recommending this to me. This is the X5 U4 um, wireless in-ear monitor system. So I have these nice, really nice Shure uh, headphones that go around the back of my ears. They're clear, so you actually don't see them at all. Um, and then I have them run into here. And what's great about this is I actually have it plugged into the audio interface uh, directly. And so what's great about this is for a lot of headphones, they end up being wired. Um, I want to be able to monitor the audio on my interface so I can hear how loud my mic is, all those things like that. This is basically what that allows. Uh, better than Bluetooth because Bluetooth wouldn't make it so I could hear myself. I would only hear the guest or anything like that. So this allows me to monitor my audio wirelessly so I can move around. And I also don't have any wires showing, which is really, really nice. Um, yeah, I got a Google Home there that I do some control on. You'll see that I have a webcam up there. I never use that anymore. I pretty much almost exclusively use this camera. Um, and yeah, that's kind of the, the, the gist of the setup. Let's show you the backside that you probably never get to see. I have a little bit of cable management left to do, but there's a couple cables all hanging down. Um, but yeah, I recently made the upgrade to the A7S III. So then now I have everything running in 4K. So now I can record in 4K, all that fun stuff. Um, then in terms of the lighting that I do, um, I have a floating desk arm. This is what I mainly use throughout the day to kind of light myself for calls and things like that. Um, and it just have a Philips Hue bulb in there so I can change color. I can say things like, hey, Google, set Will's desk lamp to blue. And it can change color and all those fun things like that. But when I am doing official recordings and things like that, I tend to end up using my studio lights a lot. So these are Aperture lights. Um, they're really, really great priced, um, very quiet, very, very, um, they're just awesome. Awesome lights to use. And I have the nice mini dome on it. Um, and that gives me a r nice little side light that fills me in a little bit more than this can as well. Um, and when I'm shooting big content, which you'll see with the green screen later, I have some additional light domes and Aperture lights as well. Then in terms of backlighting on here, I have these LS1s. These are old lights now, um, but I just throw some gels in front of them to give it a little bit of extra color. So this is also made by Aperture. Highly recommend that light as well. And then I have another one over here that I put a green gel in front of, and that lets me get this cool like green to blue transition look that I have on here as well. Um, and while we're looking at the backdrop, uh, we'll talk a little bit about what we got here. So um, these are all Ikea shelves. Very, very great shelves. Um, I used to have black shelves that I got from like Borders when they all shut down a long time ago, but white is way better. It lets me put color on it, way reflective. I don't have as much of a black hole behind me. Um, I get a lot of comments about these Funko Pops. Funko used to be one of our clients, so they send me a ton of them. I'm a humongous Flash fan, so they sent me tons and tons of Flashes. So I think I have like every single Flash Pop that ever exists. Um, and then just in terms of little accent lights and things like that, I just pick up like look on Amazon for like neon lights. So this one's really cool by PlayStation. Uh, there's a cool mushroom. I have this like mountains up here. Um, I have a lightning bolt over here. I have a neon sign that says do what you love. I have one of those marquee signs that, you know, we used to use for event icons and stuff. I have a lightning or a light bulb. I have an on-air sign. I try to like put a couple of them in here just to add a little bit of a character and things like that splashes throughout it as well. Um, I get some questions about this. This is a Lametric clock, which uh, not in addition to showing time as I break things, it also, you know, can cycle through information and things like that as well, which is really cool. Um, and then, yeah, just lots of little knickknacks and pictures and things like that I've picked up throughout the years um, on here as well. All my favorite books in hard copy and, um, yeah, all that fun stuff. And then, just to give you an idea, you don't ever see this, but this is like the mess it is up, up here. I have lots and lots of cables and <laughs> power and everything like that. And all these color bulbs are just Philips Hue bulbs, by the way, and a Philips Hue strip behind there as well. Um, I mean, we have tons of Philips Hue bulbs all around the house. So just kind of let's add some color and things like that. Um, because just to give you an idea, if I can grab this real quick, is uh, this is the control for the side lights. Kind of when I turn it off, you know, there's just not as much color. There's some color, but, you know, this definitely fills it out a lot more, which is really nice. Um, 
yeah, let's keep going around the room and you can see what else we got in here. Um, I get a lot of questions about my whiteboard. So whenever I'm doing virtual events and presenting, I do not do um, any uh, PowerPoint anymore. So I have a digital whiteboard that lets me draw on it. This is by a company called Vibe. Highly recommend it. They have very, very affordable whiteboards that let you draw on sketch and you can collaborate virtually and everything like that. Highly recommend it. Um, and so anytime I'm doing a presentation here in the studio, it's utilizing the Vibe board. And then behind it, let's see if I can kind of turn some of these lights off so you guys can see this in full. Um, I have a big, gigantic green screen. Uh, this is like, honestly, a very, very cheap green screen that you can buy on Amazon. And I use this for all of our TikTok videos and anything that we need to use a green screen for. Um, you know, before I wasn't, you know, didn't use as much nice of a camera. So my nice camera was actually being used for this filming. So I might be trying to figure out a way to move that above here so I can like pull it down. And so then that way I don't ever have to like move the camera or the desk or anything like that and speed up the workflow a little bit. But that's a side on here. Um, what's cool is you'll see up here, oh man, you can barely see it, is I have these really, really cool, um, poles and they're called Manfrotto auto poles and Manfrotto let's see if I actually zoom in so you guys can see this it's actually like kind of like a pressure pole and what's great about it is essentially you put it up wherever you want it on the ceiling or whatever it is you put it in the edge and you pull it it basically makes a pole that can't be pulled down so without having to drill into the walls I basically can have a pole holding the entire green screen um, I used to pull on my studio lights and stuff like that up there but now that this is a little bit more mobile um, I don't have them on there, um, but it still makes it really easy if you can't hang things and drill into walls, you need to hang things. Works really, really well. All right. Um, last couple things that you'll see on here is that all throughout the room, I have these sound dampening panels. Um, these don't make it soundproof, but what they do is they reduce the amount of reflections that you have in the room. So then that way it basically makes it so... You can hear it's pretty much dead. <laughs> the only echo I hear is actually down the hall. So once I close that door, it pretty much becomes dead in here, audio-wise. So it sounds really, really good um, on here. Um, let's see what else we got on here. Last but not least, this closet. This is where I kind of keep all the storage and stuff. I run a power cable down into the closet. And you know, this is where I charge all the microphones and kind of keep all the knickknacks and you know cases and things like that inside of here. And yeah, I think that's basically the entire studio all brought together very, very quickly in one single take. So I hope you like this video, getting to show you a little bit of the studio, some of the gear that I'm using, and uh, hopefully helps in setting up your personal studio, or if you're shooting video content, makes your content look awesome. All right, this has been Will Curran. I'm going to get out of here, and uh, actually I got to go record a podcast. See you later.